Hi, today I thought we'd look at some UVC LEDs. I picked these ones up from LCSC. I just happened to notice that they were on there when I was browsing for some other parts. So I picked up a variety of UVC LEDs, but I'm sure you've seen all of the adverts on eBay and AliExpress and probably on Big Clive's channel for various UVC LED lamps that are supposed to be suitable for sterilization, killing germs, killing viruses, and that kind of thing. And it turns out that most of those are just UVA LEDs. Some of them were turquoisey color LEDs to look like the glow that you get from UVC. Um, so these ones look like the real deal. So I thought we'd have a look at these today. I've got some little PCBs made just so that we can power these up because they're quite small surface mount devices. These were from JLC PCB. Uh, there's three different types here and it looks like when you place an order on the JLC PCB website, Obviously, they always advertise that you can get your PCBs for $2. So the first set is $2, and I think the other two were $4 each. But uh, for a little bit of experimentation to make things easier, I don't think that price is too extortionate. So don't forget to look at the JLC PCB website if you're looking at getting some boards made. So we've got a variety here. There's a different array of power levels. There's also some that have UVA and UVC dyes in them. Let's have a quick look at what I've bought. So I've got a few of these to look at. This one is a 3.5 by 3.5 millimetre LED and this one is a UVA and UVC device. So you can see here there's two diodes in here. The top one is the UVA one. The UVC one has a protection diode across it. You can see the forward current into the UVA LED is 200 milliamps and it's got a standard forward voltage of about 3.2 volts. The UVC is only rated for 30 milliamps and you can see here it has a higher forward voltage and we'll talk about that in a minute but a higher vo forward voltage of about 6.5 volts with a 2.5 milliwatt radiant flux. The next one from Paralyte which seems to have quite a lot of UVC LEDs is just a single UVC LED device, 40 milliamp input current and 4 milliwatts of radiant flux out of that one. Then we've got another by Tonyu, uh, slightly more expensive once again and if we have a look at the specs, you can see that the UVC LED is rated for 120 milliamps. And again, it has that higher forward voltage. Got another from Powerlight, slightly higher output device, uh, 80 milliamps with radiant flux of 9.2 milliwatts. And then finally, the largest out of the lot, this is a 5x5 five five millimeter device, $8.54. And this one is the highest output device. It's rated for about 350 milliamps, forward voltage 7 volts, but 28 milliwatts of UVC output. But you can see here the UVC LEDs are really not very efficient. You're putting in 2.7 watts here and only getting 28 milliwatts out. So this is what one of the plain UVC LEDs looks like. You've got the cathode on the right hand side signified by the little notch here. The anode on this side, we've got the UVC die in the middle and there's a little protection diode across the terminals at the bottom here. But you can see it's a really interesting structure and also the device has to be made from very specific materials because UVC obviously degrades a lot of plastics, a lot of rubbers, a lot of silicone. So the material selection here is quite specific and that's why these devices are quite a lot more expensive. Also. They do have to go through a special process to be made, which also adds to the cost. And then we've got one of the LEDs with both a UVA LED at the very top and then the UVC die. You can see the die is quite a lot smaller in this one. This is one of the lower power 40 milliamp devices, again with a protection diode at the bottom to protect the UVC LED. And that is a protection diode for reverse polarity, but also for ESD because these UVC LEDs are extremely sensitive to electrostatic discharge. I mentioned in the data sheet that the forward voltage for these LEDs is quite a bit higher than your standard LED. So somewhere between six and seven volts for just a single LED die. Now, this is a standard single die LED with a PN junction. And the typical way that an LED works in simple terms is that when you forward bias the LED, the electrons in the n-type material and the holes in the p-type material will recombine if the energy is high enough and that energy is basically your forward voltage. Now in simple terms the holes and the electrons both have different energy levels so when they recombine 
there is a mismatch and that produces a quantum of energy which is our photon that is emitted from the LED die. And depending on the level of mismatch, that dictates the energy in that photon. And the photon is directly correlated to the wavelength that you want to produce. So very short wavelengths have a high frequency and therefore have more energy in them. So that's right down at the UVC end of the spectrum. Very long wavelengths up in the high infrared have a lot less energy, which is why you'll see infrared emitters typically have forward voltages somewhere around 1.2 volts or something like that. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got this UVC LED that has a forward voltage of 6 or 7 volts. I've just picked out three different LEDs that we're going to test and we'll just refill them on the little MHP30. So that's the LEDs soldered up. Let's power them up and have a look at the output. So first of all, we've got the LED here with the two dies in it, one UVC and one UVA LED. I've just connected up the UVA LED to the bench power supply. So that's the little LED at the top. That should have an emission spectrum between 390 and 410 nanometers. So we should see that very familiar deep purpley glow. And there we go, that's lighting up quite nicely. That's about 20 milliamps into the die. Now, I do have a spectrometer, so we can check the wavelength here. I will need to turn down the intensity quite a bit and also turn off the ring light. And there is the output from the spectrometer. So about 395 nanometers here. So bang in line with it being a UVA LED. Next up, we'll take a look at the UVC die. That's the one right in the middle. And if we power that up, obviously taking precautions now because potentially we've got UVC being emitted from the LED. We turn it on and we do see that sort of ghostly turquoisey colour that you often see from UVC emitters. And you can see it's actually very low in intensity, which suggests that given that it is dissipating a fair bit of power, the energy is not mainly in that peak that we're able to see with our eye. Here you can see how it looks with the ring light turned off and it's given a very eerie glow. Now if we take a look at the output from the spectrometer, you can actually see a peak there at 565 nanometers, which is typically a sort of yellowy green colour, but I don't think that's accurate. I'm not sure if the spectrometer just doesn't like this wavelength um, or that the fibre is fluorescing slightly. The actual... UVC region, the 280 nanometers or so, which should be being emitted from this LED, is somewhere off the scale here where my spectrometer can't quite reach. But you can definitely see there's nothing here in the UV region. And this sort of area here would actually be the weird tur turquoisey color. So I think we're just getting some internal fluorescence in the fiber that goes to the spectrometer. Next up, we've got the large 5x5mm LED that's rated all the way up to 350 milliamps. I'm just going to run it at a few milliamps and see how it looks under the camera. So there it's turned on at about one milliamp and you can just see the entire area of that LED die just giving a weird hazy blue colour. This is how it looks with the ring light turned off and you can see what looks like four separate sections. I th don't think it's four individual LEDs. I think it's just how the cathode is connected up to the die to create the PN junction. Here we've got the spectrum for the 5x5mm LED at just 1 milliamp, and once again we've got that peak at about 550 nanometers. So either this is a byproduct of the way these diodes work, or we've got some fluorescence going on somewhere in the chain between the LED and the spectrometer. We've got a bit more of a hump down here than last time, around 400 to 420 nanometers. Again, this could be some fluorescence, but what I'm noticing is the amount of energy, certainly when you turn up the current, the amount of energy going into it doesn't correspond with the amount of energy that we're seeing in these peaks. So that does suggest there is some energy being dissipated somewhere else, and it does appear like these really are true UVC LEDs. Finally, the slightly smaller 3.5mm LED, and we'll just turn this on. And if we turn off the ring light, you can see that basically just looks like a smaller version of that 5x5mm LED. 
And yeah, here's the spectrum for that one. Same manufacturer as the 5x5mm LED, and the spectrum is almost identical. So we're seeing that peak again at 550, and a little hump around here between 400 and 410 nanometers. So I've seen a lot of people testing UVC LEDs with bananas and it turning a green banana brown. I haven't got any bananas, but I have got an apple, and I've just set up a fan to keep the LED cool, and the LED is just shining at the apple. And hopefully, if we've got the fan there, we should prove that it's not kind of any thermal burning effects and it is UVC. So I'm just going to leave this here for about 10 minutes and then we'll have a look at whether it's actually made any difference to the appearance of the apple. Right, it's been about 10 minutes. I've just turned everything off and I put some JLC PCB tape across here and the LED was focused just around here and you can see that slightly different colour. If we peel off the tape... Yeah, you can see there's quite a neat line where the tape was and where it wasn't. So I'm not really sure if this is a very scientific test, but certainly it is causing something to occur in the skin of this apple, similar to how it would happen in a banana. So uh, yeah. So that's a look at some UVC LEDs, and these ones do appear to be the real thing. You can tell by the construction, also the price, and also given the amount of power that you're putting in, you can't actually see that much with the naked eye. Obviously, you've got to be careful anyway because UVC is quite damaging to your eye. But, um, you know, it's not putting out the amount of light that you'd see from a UVA LED where you can see quite a lot of purple and it's fluorescing objects in the room. Also, some of those fake UVC lights have been in the turquoise area and even that is not very visible from these LEDs. So they do appear to be the real thing, and it did cause the skin of this apple to be denatured. Now, in terms of what they're useful for, I don't think they're good for general purpose sterilization. They really don't cover a very large area, and I, I don't have the means to test whether an area has been sterilized by these, but I imagine it would take more than just waving it over the desk for the area to be sterilized. And also you've got to be careful with UVC anyway because it very easily damages uh, things like rubber and plastics. Um, so you're better off with surface sprays anyway. What they are probably useful for is things like optical detectors where maybe you're putting in a fluid that's gonna fluoresce and is only active in this region. And then you're looking back with a photo detector to see what was happening. I can imagine it being quite useful for instrumentation and uh, devices like that, but certainly for sterilization, I think it only has very limited usefulness. I guess you could put these in a water column and maybe pass water through it and it would be a means to sterilize the water, but really it would need quite a lot of contact time with the UV LED to kill everything in there. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what the application is for these, but at least we found some, if anyone needs any, that appear to be completely legitimate. So hopefully you found the video useful. Thanks to all my Patreons that are keeping the channel going that obviously pays for little experiments like this. And until next time, thanks for watching.